Today's Pokemon card tournament vlog is going to make some of you guys mad and honestly, I'm okay with that. Mew VMAX has been one of the best Pokemon card decks ever since its release in Fusion Strike. And although set after set, it seems like Pokemon has been releasing sort of these counter cards that counter Mew VMAX directly, it still manages to run rampant and secure big wins, especially at a national Japanese Pokemon card tournament. We've seen the counters like Drapion, we've seen counters like Path to the Peak, we've seen counters like the Mighty Yena, and most recently they introduced Spirit Tomb in the Padaya Evolve set in English. So with all these counters in mind, just think about how crazy it is that a Mew VMAX deck won Japan's national Pokemon card tournament last Saturday with about 2,000 players in attendance. And to add insult to injury, that Spiritomb card was actually in the deck that the Mew VMAX player played against in the final. So today we're going to be playing the exact 60 card deck that won Japan's national Pokemon card tournament last week. We got Mew VMAX. Now to make this even more entertaining and add some more storyline plot to this uh, to this vlog is I want to let you guys know I don't really play Mew VMAX at all. I'm a player that hates Mew VMAX because it's so good. It's so strong. It's just, it's disgusting how good it is. Personally, I have only played a Mew VMAX deck once in my life in tournament play and for maybe an hour online. So I really don't have much experience at all when it comes to this Mew VMAX deck. So we're going to see today with my lack of experience if we can win a Pokemon card tournament at Manta Trading this week using the Japan Nationals first place winning deck. And yeah, you heard that right. We're going to Manta Trading. This isn't no cakewalk of a tournament. I'm not going to walk in and stomp on a bunch of kids. Kids, although the kids there are kind of crazy. In fact, in last week's tournament, I haven't posted the vlog yet. It's gonna go up after this because I'm I'm excited to post this vlog a bit more. Last week I played a Meow Scarada EX deck, and just for reference, Manta Trading has some of the best players in the GTA. The weeklies do get pretty sweaty. If I were to rank a difficulty uh rating to these kind of tournaments, this is like this is veteran difficulty we're talking. We have players like the back-to-back -back international juniors division winner for OCIC and EUIC Remy compete at these tournaments. I played against his dad round one last last week and then Remy round two. Like I play against, why am I playing against this this crazy child prodigy in, in, in the early rounds so often? Also, one of my good friends, LDF Little Dark Fury, one of the best Pokemon card YouTubers out there. He attends these events as well. So if you guys wanna check out his channel, I'll leave a link down below. I kinda like to interview him every week about the meta and just random stuff in general in the Pokemon scene. So uh, yeah, anyways, let's get going. I am excited because, you know, this deck has been proven, proven to win. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna walk in it's gonna be a cakewalk. So we're here at Manta, right behind me, and I'm excited, man. There's about 23 players this week, so a smaller tournament compared to usual. I just realized I might be in for uh, for for beating too, because because Mew VMAX placed one. There might be a lot of people who want to counter it here, so we'll see. But round one's about to start. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Can I ruin your shot? I'm sorry. I didn't know you like, ran out. I like, I like it. Back I, like, I, like, I might keep the let's go in after. So round one of the tournament, man, that was an incredible, incredible round. So I was playing against the Reggie Lecky VMAX at like Electric Toolbox against Vincent, one of the better players here at Manta. The last time I played against him, I beat him with a Mew VMAX deck that week. And that was like the first week I ever played it in a tournament. And I did some crazy double cross switcher play to knock out his like Hisui and Gudra V-Star. But this week, however, was different. So he was playing the Electric Toolbox and he chose to go first. And so I went second, but I wasn't sad because Melo with a Mew, is allowed to attack or is able is essentially able to attack on the first turn which is incredible that is exactly what i managed to pull off it was really close though i almost wasn't able to pull off the turn one mellow weta attack uh because i couldn't get the elisa sparkle into my hand however on my very last fusion strike system with my second genesect on the board i was able to get the forest seal stone as the second card on the uh, on the draw and that was able to give me the elisa sparkle which allowed me to do the turn two knockout so from then on it was just knockout after knockout after knockout uh, he was only able to knock out my one Meloetta so I had taken all my prize cards and he was only able to take one so very very happy so we have some time to kill before the second round of the tournament so I figure we uh, you know hang out with the homie Little Dark Fury and check out his deck and get his thoughts on the current format as well as the results from Japan so I'm playing a spicy anti-meta deck I am playing Arceus Pikachu with an Umbreon. Ooh. So, yeah, the idea of this deck is use Flying Pikachu against Xien Pao, Lost Box, King Lu, any deck that doesn't really have good answers. And even though Xien Pao plays Palkia 
-hmm. and Baxcalibur. You hit Palkia for weakness. Yeah. Baxcalibur, three shot uh, Pikachu. You just set up two fine Pikachus. This deck also plays uh, Judge and Iono and Path. Mm -hmm. So you make it very hard for Shampoo to even get anywhere. And same with Lost Box. To beat Gardevoir, we're playing the Umbreon. Once again, playing heavy hand disruption with the Path of Peak alongside a very strong Dark VMAX. Like Umbreon does make it very tough for something like Gardevoir to keep up. And you also get the free Gust if you don't get a Path down. Or you can go Umbreon first and then play Path. And you also have a, an attacker against Mew VMAX. And it all is with Arceus. I theory crafted this deck last week actually because I thought that Flying Pikachu was going to be a good call. Um, this does play the Bibaral Squolvin Engine. The Duraludon deck only played a Lumineon. So that, that build was slightly different. This one does play Bibaral. Um, which Bibbrel can be hit or miss sometimes. It does hurt your turn, like one turn two consistency because you have to rely on Iono and Judge as opposed to the Duraludon build. Where you can like Colrus or Research or Adventurous Discovery to set up. But mm. uh, so far, so good. I just took down a Meow Scarada Lost Box, which Ooh. is kind of tough. If they set up the Meow Scarada, you have to two shot it. Yeah. I whiffed turn one Energy Arceus. Ooh. My opponent got turn one Cram. Like it, it was looking pretty rough, but Path plus Heavy Hand Disruption did kind of get me there in the end. So. Thankfully, Lost Box had those like Lost Box draws, and with a bit of hand disruption and shutting off Meow Scrod's ability, we were able to get there. Because that, that was a scary matchup. I can't even use my Umbreon because it's weak to grass. Last weekend was Japan's national oh tournament. Did you see the results at all? Are you up to date on? on yeah, right I saw the Fusion Mew one, right, oh, with the Ice Fusion Cube. Mew one. How does that make you feel? And what do you think about Fusion Mew still being so dominant and strong, so many sets after Fusion Strikes release? It's an annoying deck. As an Arceus player, I don't like seeing it. Even though Spirit Tomb is good, everyone's playing the Ice Q now to knock out the Spirit Tomb here in one. Mm -hmm. I still think Spirit Tomb is still worth it to play because there's still double Turbo Mew out there. And I mean, if you're playing like two Spirit Tombs or even two Mana Feed, the Ice Q is not a problem. And if you're as an Arceus player, if they're Ice Qing the Spirit Tomb, they're not Meloetoing the Arceus, which means you get to play the game. Mm -hmm. So it's honestly like fine. I don't know if Fusion Mew can be Lost Box, even with like the new Iono. So we'll have to see where it goes. I think double Turbo Mew is still fine depending on the popularity of Spirit Tomb, because nobody plays Drapion anymore, except for uh, Snorlax Lugia, and that's about it. Are there any spicy decks that have surprised you since it came out, or what do you think is the best deck to come from the Padea Evolve? The best deck easily is Gardevoir Reversal Energy. That deck is just insane. I think now that it has Iono, it has a very better, like an easier time against Lost Box, and the deck is just bananas. Uh, reversal Energy, is a very good card. And it actually, as an Arceus player, it's even scarier now because it's easier for them to one-shot Arceus with Shiny Narcona Guardian. If they were to go Zacian before, yeah. you can trade pretty well into it because it's a free two-prize knockout, especially if you ever get to kill a Guardi down the road. Two decks have surprised me. Zoro Box has surprised me a lot. Okay. With a Versal Energy, it's actually pretty good. And with Lost Box, kind of on the DL a little bit, Zoro Box is actually pretty good against most of the meta deck. The other deck that's been surprised me is Reggie's. Reggie's got Super Rod and it also got Luminous Energy, which is like a mini Aurora, and it's one of my favorite decks to play so far in this format, and I think Reggie's actually could be good again, to be honest. The Xiem Pao deck video I did on uh, last Thursday, or whenever you're watching this, the Thursday Pao the Evolve came out on live, mm -hmm. and then the second one, maybe watch the United Wings deck profile. It's actually a pretty good, like, budget beginner deck. United Wings has uh, Dark and Lightning attackers in the deck, and it has the ability to attack turn one. United Wings isn't bad against Gardevoir, Mew, and even Lugia is pretty decent, so United Wings is like a great beginner budget deck to play right now to get into the game, in my opinion. Those are the two decks I recommend watching. Oh, all right. Good luck in round two, man. You too, bro. Round two is about to start, and uh, we are now going to be playing against the homie. Matt, I'm sorry. Bro. I'm sorry. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, bro. <laughs> oh, man. So round two is done, and as you guys saw, we played against the homie Matt. He was playing the deck that he just showed us in the interview, so I got the leaks right beforehand. Unfortunately, I just was not able to set up. My deck did not see a single Genesect all game. I bricked, it was just, it was brutal. Matt won, GG's, and then we played a second game for fun, so we could make it like a two out of three series for fun, and uh, I bricked again. <laughs> it's so bad. And I also hit three tails on Crabmomatic, so, Chromomatic is not a real card. I just can only flip tails, which is just unfortunate. Round three is coming up soon, so let's go inside and play round three and hopefully not break.
round number three is done. We played against a Lugia V-Star deck. As you saw, we played against Leo, and uh, this was another embarrassing game for me. I bricked once again. I didn't see a single Genesect the entire game. The entire game, I kid you not. It was just absolutely horrendous. I don't know if my luck could get worse, but it happened. There is something good that came out of that matchup. We play against Leo, and Leo is currently on a mission, just like I am, to find some roommates or some car mates to go on a road trip to NIC in Columbus, Ohio. I don't have a way to get down there right now or a floor to sleep on. Leo's going, so right now it looks like he's gonna be my road trip partner, and we are now currently looking for one to two more people in the GTA area that are down to go and split the car ride down there. He might have an Airbnb already, but I'm still looking for like a place to sleep. So if one to two more homies want to pull up with us for the road trip down to Columbus, Ohio, June 29th, or I'll have the dates up on screen. If anyone's looking for NASC buddies, shoot me a DM on Instagram, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can work out. But right now, round four is coming up, and I hope I don't break again. This is this is embarrassing, man. Doing some trading in between rounds. I'm trading away my Japanese Simisir V-Star, which I pulled in Japan. Check out the Japan blog. We got the Miyaskarada EX Full Art, Adventurous Discovery, uh, Dunsparce, Spit Ops, Miyaskarada EX, Spit Ops, and yeah, there we go. So round four of the tournament is done and we played against a Shin Pao deck, one of the most popular decks right now in the Pokemon card game. I've played against so many Shen Pao decks online and my Viewmax deck just ran crazy. I got the double VIP pass turn one oh and I was God. just stomping the entire match. I don't even think they got a single prize card, which was just beautiful. So an easy dub for round number four and round number five is coming up real soon. So uh, yeah, let's get into round number five. Final round, we're about to start. I'm playing Remy. This monster just destroyed my V-Star marker. Don't get on his bad side. He will destroy your V-Star marker too. Oh man, round number five against Remy. I played against Remy last week in the second round and I lost to him because my deck bricked and I just couldn't do anything against him. And today I managed to not brick against Remy and actually Remy conceded on his second turn, I believe. So very, very fast game. So we finished with a record of 3-2 for today's tournament. I'll find out what uh, what ranking I got in a second. So I'll have a pop up on screen. The only two losses today were just because my deck bricked completely and I couldn't get a single ooh, Genesect ooh. on the board. So maybe if it was a best three, I don't lose, but that's unheard of not seeing two, <laughs> not seeing a single Genesect at all. For both games in a row. Check out my eBay store link down below. We're doing a bunch of $1 auctions this week for a bunch of really cool cars, including Alt Arts. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.